Welcome back to the End Time Remnant YouTube channel. I am Dorothy. Today is October 14th and I wanted to take a few minutes to share with you a testimony of something that happened last week. Um, it was probably about 6.30 in the morning and I was headed to the salon to get my hair done. There was a lot on my mind and on my heart, and I began to um, just pray and talk to the Lord. And in full transparency, I was praying to the Lord about my finances and just really desiring to see him come through in a major way. He is a provider, and he has done a phenomenal job of providing, um, but it was one of those prayers where I had the boldness to ask for more. Um, I want him to show up in a completely different way. Um, I was praying and I was crying and I was saying, Lord, I am ready for abundance. <laughs> um, I know you as Jehovah Jireh in the wilderness, but I am praying in the name of Jesus to know you as Jehovah Jireh in the promised land. Where is my land of milk and honey? And I would like to see it. <laughs> um, so I share that with you just to give you kind of like a backdrop of just really what the prayer sounded like. Um, so I get to the salon. I am the first one there. I am the first one in the chair. Um, I get my hair done. Um, I get out. And one of the things about the hair salon's parking lot is that it is very narrow. There's not a lot of room for error. You need to be paying attention to what you're doing. Okay. But here I am, uh, you know, 7.30, 7.45 in the morning. My hair's done. I thought I was hot. I don't know what I was paying attention to, but I was not paying attention to what was behind me. So I put my car in reverse and I end up bumping a car that was parked behind me um and I was like oh <laughs> it wasn't like hard or anything like that but it was hard enough for me to feel yo you just bumped into something so I look in my rear view and I don't see any damage and I don't see any body okay if there's one thing about me if I tell a testimony, I'm going to tell it how it was. Okay, so as saved as I am, for the next few seconds, the thought that came to my head was, drive off. Drive off. No one's here. No one's here to see it. Whoever's car that is, that's whoever's car that is. There's no damage from what you can see inside your car. Um, just drive off and go and, and leave. Then, literally, the next thought was, no, you are kingdom. You belong to God. And there is a way you handle business, right? Accountability is your portion. You are no saint. You have just screwed up. But it's not the screw up. It's how you handle it. Okay, and I drove around and I parked kind of in front of the car. I got out of my car to literally go see if there was any scratches, if there were any damages, if there was anything crazy that I'd done. And I didn't see any scratches. I didn't see any dents. But what I did see was um, a license plate that looked bent. I'm like, okay, you probably did this with the impact of your car. You probably bent this license plate. So I got back into my car and I began to write a note because even then there was no one around. The car was parked. There was no one in the parking lot and there was no one to literally talk to. And I had no idea whose car it belonged to. So I wrote a note. Um, I explained what had happened. 
um, I left my telephone number and I placed the note underneath the windshield wiper of the car that I'd hit. And as I drove away, I said a prayer and I said, Lord, I said, I just put this into your hands. I said, I am doing what represents you most. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. There's a saying that says no good deed goes unpunished. We live in a time where people are always trying to secure the bag. Okay. I recognize that all I could have potentially done was bump um, this individual's license plate. But let me tell you something. I am, I am not naive to think that everyone is super honest and everyone is, is perfect all the time. You know what I mean? I leave you my information to contact me because what I see is a, a bent license plate. And then the next thing I know, you trying to take me to court for something altogether different. Like everyone's level of integrity is not the same. And so I recognize that in leaving my contact information, I was opening myself up to however this was going to play out. You know, sometimes people go the crooked route, okay? And the reason why I'm able to say that is because for the first couple of seconds, I, my flesh wanted to myself, okay? My flesh, the flesh said, drive off. And the Holy Spirit said, you are kingdom. There is a way to handle this. There is a way to represent the God you serve. And this ain't it, sugar. Handle business, and so as I was driving off, I just prayed and I said, Lord, do your thing. I said, if I have to pay money, if, you know, insurance, whatever. I said, you are provider. I said, you have provided. I said, and you are going to take care of this situation. And I just place it all at your feet. I'm going to go throughout my day. I am not going to worry. And I leave it to you. I have done what I was supposed to do as your daughter. And I have represented Christ in my actions. And I'm going to leave the rest to you. Okay. So I went about my day, spent some time with my family. Um, and I want to say maybe a couple of hours after I left the, um, maybe not even a couple hours, maybe like an hour and change after I left the salon parking lot. I got a call to my cell phone and I answered it and it was um, a gentleman's voice on the other line. And he said, hi, um, he said, I got the note that you left on my car. Get this, get this. He said, I got the note that you left on my car. He said, first, I just want to say thank you so much for leaving the note. He was like, but honey, I just want you to know that that my license plate has been bent for quite some time. Um, there is no damage to my car and you did not bend my license plate. It's been bent for quite some time, but I want to thank you for your honesty. And I want to thank you for leaving this information for me to call you and let you know that he was like, you owe me nothing. He was like, you've done nothing to damage my vehicle, but I thank you for your honesty. Literally. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm thinking to myself, wow, God is amazing. Okay. God is amazing. He and I got off the phone. And the last thing he said to me before we got off the phone was God bless you. Okay. Why am I sharing this? Because you brother or you sister are just like me and you are wrapped in flesh. Okay. And I just want you to know that the flesh always wants to protect itself. The flesh would never lead you in a situation like this to do the right thing, okay? The flesh always wants to protect itself. And so my flesh rose up. When I first backed up into the car, I was like, ooh, <laughs> it's not funny. But I was in my car like, yo! And then I thought to myself, girl, you better get out of here. But just like that, the Holy Spirit said no. And I chose to follow the Spirit instead of what the flesh would have had me do. And anytime you follow the Spirit, it leads to life. God protects his own. There will be many times where you are as guilty as guilty can be. And your judge will get you off. 
okay? You do things with integrity. You do things his way and you will always come out okay. He will always see to it that you are okay. Add to that. As I was driving away, after I had left my contact information for um, whoever the owner of the vehicle was, the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance the prayer that I prayed before I even got to the salon. In that prayer, I was asking the Lord for abundance. I was asking our Heavenly Father for money, for some real money. And I was saying to the Lord, I'm ready. And it's one of those situations where a lot of times some of us are asking the Lord for things that we don't have the integrity to handle. It's one of those where I was able to genuinely understand, even if the Lord had allowed this to test me so that I would see what's on the inside of me and that I would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that when your back is up against the wall, you are Holy Spirit led. Your flesh is going to rise up, but you are going to yield to the Lordship of Christ and you are going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and do the right thing. Let me tell you something. Money is not the root of all evil. It's the love of money. It's the heart posture that changes once you get the money. A lot of of these rich, filthy rich preachers out here who started from nothing right? The Lord blessed them with money and everything about them changed. And so here I am asking the Lord for finances, an increase in my finances. And it's almost as though he tested me. Can you be trusted? You know what I mean? If I give you what it is that you are asking and praying for, can you be trusted to represent me? in your everyday living? Why would I why would I give the desires of your heart to you when you have no integrity? And ultimately that's what I'm trying to um, convey. Hopefully I'm not confusing anybody with this video. For some of you, you're praying and you're asking the Lord for certain things, but your character needs work. And for some of you, you've been praying And you've been asking for certain things and the Lord is saying, yes, I have pruned you. I know you and I trust you and it's coming because you can be trusted with it. Whatever it is, whatever it is, you may not be asking the Lord for an abundance in your finances because that may not be what you need or what you want right now. Um, but whatever it is that you're asking for, he needs to know that you can be trusted with it, that, that you have the character to walk into that blessing and still remain a child of God that represents him in your everyday living. So I just wanted to share this testimony. I was sitting here on my bed, just thinking, um, about it. And I wanted to share it with those of you who, um, are subscribed to the channel, because I think that. I think that this is an amazingly new season for the body of Christ. And the Lord is about to come through for many of us. And all I want you to do is just make sure that your heart posture, your character, um, everything about you is committed to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Come what may. Come what may. But you're not about to get out here and forget about God and stop living for God and stop representing God as soon as he blesses you. Let me tell you something. I told y'all in another video, I'm a Bible girl and I'm constantly reading the word all throughout the word. Let me tell you from Genesis to Revelation, what you see are a lot of people being for God. And then once he blesses them, acting brand new. You see that all throughout the Bible. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Well, not Jesus in the Old Testament. God, 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 right? Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. Okay. And then when he blesses them, they act a fool. And so I know that for many of us, 
the Lord is desiring to bless us real good in this season, but he wants to know that we are not going to skip down the road and turn into these hellions who don't know him and who don't live right as soon as we get the blessing. So this is to encourage you stay on that narrow path. No matter how good he blesses you, stay honest, keep your integrity do not compromise with the enemy of your soul. Coming into blessing is not a bad thing. Coming into money is not a bad thing. Getting a new home is not a bad thing. A new marriage is not a bad thing. These blessings are not bad things. It's what happens when people forget about God once they actually get the blessing. So That's all I have for you this afternoon. Um, Prayerfully, it has blessed someone and God willing, I will see you next time.